Okay, so in the days of Abraham, good. <clears throat> a person who wanted to speak to Abraham would speak to Yitzchak. A person who wanted to speak to Yitzchak, he would speak to Abraham. Even though that Abraham was, let's say, 120 years at the time, Yitzchak was 20, but they looked exactly the same. Boy, Rachmi, <clears throat> Abraham requested mercy from God. And all of a sudden, he looked old. Like it says, Avram Zakin Babiyamim. It says Abraham suddenly became old and <clears throat> coming in days. Well, perishing in Zikna. What does it mean that he got old? Hakavana Sa'arot Azaken. That all of a sudden he had a long beard. The Zikna, the Shanim Hava. That the old of. <clears throat> That his old age, his, his beard showed on his days. So it's not that Abraham became <coughs> ill or weak, <coughs> but he looked old, right? To look old. This is a, sort of the opposite of uh, modern consensus. Nowadays, people make all sorts of operations and face liftings and face twistings and face this in order that they should look young because <clears throat> looking old is a terrible thing but here we see according to judaism exactly the opposite it's not a terrible thing it's a very nice thing it's a very it's abraham even requested mercy that he should look old he didn't want to look young anymore he wanted to look old <coughs> okay the rebbe is going to say what's okay good he wanted to look what what's so important <laughs> he could have worn a little tag, right? I am Abraham, right? I am the father of Yitzchak. Rak <clears throat> zikno besar. If so, it means that previously, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Azaken the zikna says the shanim hoya. I read this wrong. Let's see. An old age of years he had. In other words, he actually was 120 years old. He wasn't, didn't have old age as far as his hair grew, his beard. Cain Persia Marsha, also the Marsha, one of the main explainers of the Talmud, he explains, because the Isa, like it says in the Midrash Rabbah, in Bereshit Perak Samaches, <clears throat> it says, Omer Rabbi Yehuda Bar Simon, Avram Tava Zigna, Avram requested old age. Omer Lofanov, he said to God, Rebun Omin, master of the world, Adam Ubano, Nechnasim Lamakom, a man and his son come into a place. He doesn't know who to stand up for. He doesn't know who to give honor to. If you give older people beards, Adam He knows who to get to give honor to. And the Rebbe is going to ask a question: Is it really so important? Well, let's see. God said back to Abraham, Chayecha, by your life. In other words, <clears throat> I promise. Devar Tov Tavata. You just said a good thing. You requested a good thing. And I'm going to begin from you. In other words, you're going to be the first one. Perish a Yafet Tor. Yafet Tor is another explainer of the Tanakh. The Tefillah Tal Shal Avram Avinu Al Shalom. The prayer of Avram. But Tviyato and his demand, Hayato was Loven Sarzakan. Not just having ha- having a beard, but that his beard should turn white. The Sarota Zakan, that the hairs of the beard, Hayugam Tahila, according to the Yafet Tor, he did have a beard. We have two different opinions here. According to one opinion, he didn't have a beard, and he requested that he would have a beard. According to the second opinion, he did, yes, have a beard, but it was not white. What is it was his, his request that his beard would be white. 
Okay, that he would have white beard. Says the Rebbe, does this all this really make any sense? I mean, Abram was so great. It really was so important to him that he had a beard and his beard was not black. And there was a big argument. They make an argument about it. If it really he did have a beard or he didn't have a beard and it was it really was arguing about having white or wasn't having white. That's such a, what, what are they arguing about? What is so important there? What is this? What, what does the subject matter? We have to understand. What is the importance of a beard so much? Avram of Yinu, all of a shalom, that Avram, boy Rachmi, he actually requested mercy from Hashem. Allah on it. According to what the Marsha said, Bakash's Rachmi, his request for mercy, Ayesha was, Allah Sarot Zakan, on the hairs of the beard. According to the Yafet Tor, Bakash at Rachmi, the request of mercy Ayata was Aloban Asaro Tazakan. It was that his beard should be white. Big argument between the Marsha and the Yafet Tor. The Marsha says that Abraham did not have a beard and he wanted to have one. And according to the Yafet Tor, he did have a beard, but he wanted it to be white. The Lozu Bilvat, is, is this really such an important topic? Not only Asher Avram Avinu Palel, not only did he pray for this, but Bakashat Rachamim. And he requested mercy, have mercy on me, Hashem. I don't deserve it, but please give me a beard or give me a white beard. El O Tava, but he demanded it. That's what it says in the manner. He demanded it. Va'ola al kulon, and even more. Kiakodesh Burhu Amarlo. God said, Davar Tov Tavata. Wow, God said, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. You really requested a really great thing. Hainu, the lozu bilavad, not only the nachon adavar, that it's proper. Sheet palel alzeh, that you should pray for this. Bebekashat rachamim, and request mercy. Ela odzot, but even more. Davar tov tavata. It's a good thing that you ask for. Good thing that you ask for. Sometimes a person asks for a thing, and she says, okay, if that's what you want, you know, that's what I'll give you, you know. Please, uh, God, give me a give me a new car. I want no. I want a red one. I want a red. I want a red car. I want a, a person has a toothache. Stop the toothache. Uh, oh, that's a it's a nice thing, right? A car, eh? A toothache. I can understand, right? Sometimes people want things that are totally unnecessary. It says, but you're supposed to request from God everything that you need. A person is supposed to turn to God. For everything that he needs. Of course, you have to work. But before you do the work and before you do it, you're supposed to ask God for success or for whatever you need. It's what you're supposed to turn to God for all of your needs. <clears throat> so Abraham turned to Hashem for his needs. So really, every time this says in the Talmud that there was one Rav, one rabbi, great rabbi, that his food would be in front of him and would, he would pray to God for food. Because God is creating the world brand new. It's in Kuntras Umayan. Because God creates the world brand new every m- moment. So every single second is a brand new creation. He would ask God, please God, give me food. And not, I don't think he would do it every, before every, every, uh, you know, every time he would chew. Every time. But logically, there's a place to do it. A person is supposed to realize, I am being created by God. The world is being created by God. Brand new every second. The whole thing is a big miracle. And God is obviously creating me for some purpose. I mean, uh, I'm here for a purpose. That purpose is also being created by God. So, I, God, please let me fulfill my purpose. And one of the purposes is, is to pray to God, to connect to God. Unusual thing. How many people even think about God? There's a creator. <clears throat> so here, Avram requests something, and God says, Oh, this is a good thing you're asking. A beard, a white beard. There's a big difference between Abraham requesting God, please send, give me a beard, and is demanding. The Be'inyan of Tefillah, when it comes to prayer, a person that prays, he knows, he knows that the thing doesn't, I don't deserve it. Below Klum, I don't deserve it at all. I'm saying, Hashem, have mercy on me. Please, I don't deserve it, Hashem, but please make the 
the, 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 find me a parking place. Right? I'm, 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 I'm late. Please, uh, Hashem, make it that the, the, the train comes on time. Right? <clears throat> it could be that I don't, <clears throat> it could be that I don't deserve it. <clears throat> I'm asking mercy. Hashem, please send the shidduch. Please send the right. The people go to the graves of the tzaddikim. Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon, a shidduch, give me up the, please, I says, listen, I, maybe I don't deserve it, you know, but I, I really want, I want the, the, the bus to come. You know, maybe it should be. Uh, that's what's called chesed chinam. Do me a favor, God. Kamaimer, like it says, kedalim kurashim dafaknu dalatecha. We say we're, it's in slichos. <coughs> we are requesting like poor people and like, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, beggars. We're knocking on your door, God. We don't deserve it. We're asking mercy. You're merciful. Avrami requested him, God, please give me a beard. I don't, I don't deserve it, but please give me one. Masha came being in a tevia, and he also demanded it. Shetovea, <coughs> that a person who demands, Yodea knows she yeshlo is a toke of the tovea. Nitvoa, he knows that there is some sort of a justification for his demand. I, you, you do, I, I, come on, I, 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 you owe me a beard. Well, Avram Avinu, where's my beard? Right? Come on. God. Hey, hey, my beard is black. I, I've been looking in the mirror for a few days here. Yeah, it's supposed to be white. Promised to be white. Right? Promised white. You, that's a tviya. Tviya means a demand. It's exactly the opposite from a prayer. A prayer is I don't deserve anything. What's going on here? Did Abraham demand? Did, it, did he really, was it coming to him? Or was it not coming to him? Why? It seems both. Huh? Why would he want this? That's a different question. That's another question. We're going to get to that, right? Right. The first question is, why was there even an issue whether he had a beard or he didn't have a beard? Why was there an issue? Because people would honor him if he had a beard. He didn't. This has really made a difference to Abraham. If we would honor him, they wouldn't honor his son. So it was so important. <clears throat> it's such an important thing. Number one. Number two, it says that he prayed. He requested mercy. Please, God. And not only did he request, he also demanded. Uh, if he demanded, it means it's, he deserves it. So we have three questions. Why is a beard so important? Why did he request mercy? And how can it be that if he requested mercy, he also demanded? And all, all uh, reversely, in he demanded. So why did he have to request mercy? It, it was He deserved it. Yeah, because of his great humility. It's not something that he wanted just for some vain. Right, well, reason. obviously, <clears throat> there must be something very, very important <clears throat> about the beard, and Abraham wasn't just asking for a uh, a beard. I mean, also let's say another thing. What does it say in the Torah? It says that Abraham was old, coming in days. What did he ask for for a beard? A beard is what makes you old. There's young people also that have beards. There's, you can you can look around Kfar Chabad. There's people who are 20 years old. They have a beard. 20, 25 years old, 30 years old. They have beards, long beards. People have beards. That makes him old just because he has a beard. <laughs> go to uh what is it called uh one of these uh, costume stores get a beard <laughs> so it must be obviously that abraham was there's something really really deep here involved <clears throat> and we'll have to see what this is what was abraham is he wasn't just just requesting a beard it must be that he was requesting something much deeper that is signified by the beard or maybe he was requesting this. He was requesting that uh, uh, an unusual thing that hadn't been in the world before, right? Goats have beards. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new thing to have a beard. Uh, goats have beards. There's, there's orangutans that have beards. It's such a big he wants to look like an orangutan. <laughs> what, what's what's happening? Was it obviously? I, Abraham was asking for something very very spiritual. Let's see what it is. Very necessary. And that's also something that God didn't think about. Right? God created man without beards. This is from Adam. When when did Adam live? Adam was born about 2,000 years after the world was created. Right? He was born about 2,000 years after the creation. 1,900 something years after the world was created. So 1,900 years, men did not have beards. You couldn't tell who was old, who was young. Right? Musushelach. He would live 900 years, 970 years. Noah, right? Adam, they lived, the, whatever. They didn't have any beards. Huh? 
But Tzorik Labim, we have to understand, and Ma'u Inyan, what is the God of Hafla? What is so great? Ma'il is a chashivus of a zakin, of a beard, Asher Avram Avinu, all of a shalom. That Avram Avinu, blessed memory, he chnisat smo bezeh, that he even entered into this whole topic, but talk of Godel with such, such determination. Lo rak but tefillah, not only in prayer, u bakasha and request, elegam but talk of shel tefillah, but also in a a demand, but taina shel kavod, said I want to have people won't honor me. They in honor you day alimi lechab mikabed. You know people don't know who to give honor to, who to stand up for. Me or my son, so important to him. Hainu the mishish lozak and a person that has a beard, who mechubad, he's honorable. Abriyo tzarechim lechabdo, and people should give him honor, stand up for him, give your place in the in the bus. Misha ein lozak and a person who is not old, mit bazeh b'shlilat kavod. No one gives him honor. No one stands up for him. No one says, please, after you. Shehoya Megillo was coming to Abraham. Imhoyalo Zakin, if he had a beard. And all of a sudden, God agreed. Akurish Bruchu, he schemed al Yado. Hashem agreed to him. I should dover tov tavata that you demanded this. What's so great about the beard? Why is this even a subject, a topic in Judaism? What's going on? Yeah, it's interesting. You think in your mind of Noah and Abraham. Right, sure. You can't imagine them without it. Biblical characters have beards. Yeah. Maybe that's why Abraham requested mercy so that all the people who draw all these biblical pictures won't be wrong. Now they'll have beards from now. Adam didn't didn't have a beard. It says that Adam was created already 20 years old. It was already. Ah, but. Ha'inyan. Herschel, you with me? Who is? Tehine Isa of Midrash Rabbah says in Midrash Rabbah Breshis, Perak Nuntes. Oiz v'hadar levusho v'tishak l'yom acharon. Power and glory is its garments, levusha. And she will laugh on the last day. What is this talking about? This is a pasuk, a sentence in Proverbs. Again, Oz v'hadar levusha v'tishak l'yom acharon. Power and glory are her garments. And she will laugh on the last day. What is this talking about? Oz v'hadar, <coughs> power and glory, levusha, are the garments of the Torah. <coughs> the Torah. What is the Torah? The Torah is not like anything else that there is in the world, even vaguely. The Torah is the will and the wisdom of the creator of the universe right now. A person who understands any idea in the Torah, he links himself, unifies himself with the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is in his brain. A person that does any one of the commandments of the Torah, the will of God is in this person's limbs. He's not moving because he wants to. He's moving the way that God wants him to. Incredible. The creator of the universe actually put himself in a book, his wisdom, his will in a book, and from that he puts it inside of you. It says the garment of the Torah is power and glory. That's the Torah. V'tishak layom acharon and she will laugh, the Torah will laugh on the last day. <clears throat> when does the Torah laugh? When is the Torah happy? Matan schoran, the reward, la'atid lavo, is in the future. Which that can mean either after a person dies, he gets a small reward, a little, and especially in the raising of the dead. Mimi atalomed, from whom do you learn from Avram? Al Yedeshikatu by means of that that it's written. Vishamru Derech Avayala Sotsudaka by means of what it says that Abraham. Now it says that Abraham knew the whole Torah before it was given. How did Abraham know the whole Torah that he was given? He was such the Torah is eternal. The Torah is the eternal will of Hashem. 
It's not just Hashem just decided to make up these ideas one day. And he just gave these ideas like 3,000 years ago. And since then, we can just do whatever we want to with them. <clears throat> Take it or leave it. The Torah is the will, the wisdom, will and wisdom of God before the world was created. The Torah was created by means of the, of, of the Torah. The world was created by means of the Torah. Avram just tuned into this. He tuned into this truth. <clears throat> the, it, it seems that from Shem that they learned mostly the seven Noahide commandments. Shem, they learned the seven Noahide commandments and all their implications. How to act, how to think, how to feel, how to charity, etc. Exactly what they learned and why it took so long. You know, it says that the, the what was it, 14 years, Yaakov was it. What exactly he learned for 14 years, he didn't go to sleep. To this day, I don't really know. But nevertheless, it wasn't exactly the ideas of the Torah as we have, because it says that Avram was one of the unique ones. I don't think that Shem had the same, you know, the, the secrets of putting on tefillin and the secrets of keeping Shabbat and the things could be. I never really have gotten an answer to that to this day. If somebody knows, I would appreciate it if they would tell me. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Avram, it says, was unusual. He did the whole Torah before it was given. He knew what the Torah was. <clears throat> Why? Because he had such devotion to the creator, to the giver of the Torah, that little by little it was revealed to him why he was created. What each, Because the Torah co- corresponds to the limbs and the blood vessels of a person. So Abraham wanted to do, you know, what do I do with this limb? What do I do with my heart? What do I do with my eyes? What do I do with my ears? What do I do this? And God helped him so that he was connected as much as he could. I mean, he couldn't have put on actual physical tefillin. There were no such things then. He couldn't do the commandments physically. So the only physical commandment that Abraham did was circumcision. All the others he did were spiritual. These were conclusions that he came to on his own. The only physical, actual physical commandment that he did in a physical way was circumcising himself. And that he waited for God to tell him to do. <clears throat> there are different reasons why it says that he waited. Why did Abraham wait? One reason it says is because uh, he, he had to damage himself. He couldn't damage himself unless God told him to all the other commandments he could do on his own. Who would you think of doing something like that to uh, If it was the commandment, then he did it. Well, well, no, once, once God told him to do it. Before but it says that he imagine. came He came to the conclusion on his own. Who would imagine you have to keep Shabbos? Who would imagine you have to yeah. put on tefillin? Who would imagine on Pesach you have to eat matzah? Who would imagine? Right? Yeah, None of the commandments in the Torah <clears throat> are really natural. Mm-hmm. There's some of them that are natural, but they're, they're natural, how do you say, with, uh, you can, to a certain degree. You can even argue that the prohibition against murder is just... Uh, it's convenience. Just it's convenience, right. The... The Germans and the communists, and you know, Shang, what's his name? Uh, uh, the communist in China and the communist in Russia, they argued that uh, murder was just a convenience that you could do it, and they won. They won. It came out that murder was okay. Blessing of Esau. <clears throat> yep, right. Well, there, yeah, right, right. 100%. <clears throat> Mao Tse Tung, they say he killed at least 50 million people. With his uh, beautiful ideas, Mimi Atalo made from Avram, but it says Avram Shomer Derech Hashem Lasot Tzedakah Zacha Avram by because Avram watched the way of God to do charity. In other words, the only reason he he realized that the only reason God created the world is in order that we should improve it. That's called tzedakah. So Abraham devoted his whole life. To improving the world the way that God wants. Because Abraham did this, Zachalazigna, he became old. That's really the idea of being old, namely that all of your days are filled with what God wants. Zui Milas And this is the big thing about having the beard. Shahu Hadras Panim. And this is the idea of the beard not just growing a physical beard but the spiritual implications that come along with it it says because of the power of the Torah this is the tokif of the Torah that's what it means the yom acharon 
<clears throat> Who do you learn this from? From Avram Avinu. This is Avram Avinu by keeping the Torah as he mirrored it to this power and glory. What was the power and the glory? The power of the glory of doing what God wants. It changed him completely. And he wanted just that it should have a sign, which is beard. Now, it's interestingly enough, if you look in the works of Kabbalah, it talks about God's beard. And it explains in different places, different aspects. The 13 attributes of mercy come from the beard. Of God's beard. Now we know that God does not have a form and God is not a person. But on the other hand, it does say that he has eyes and nose and mouth. And it... So this is spiritual, infinite aspects of God that we can't really understand. Okay, Herschel. The Hine. Kasiv it is written. Ki ner mitzvah v'torah or. It says that the <clears throat> commandments are like a lamp. And the Torah is the light that comes from the lamp. Sha Torah meir et aner mitzvah. The Torah shines up, makes shine the lamp of the commandments. The commandments are just deeds that we do, and a person can do it automatically. He puts on tefillin, he does things automatically, which is okay. You know, there's some people that that's the highest level that they can, uh, of, of sincerity that they can have. You know, they can't really comprehend very much about what God wants and why God wants and really get excited about God. And simple people, they do what God wants. It's wonderful. That's great. But still, the fact of the matter is that makes the mitzvahs like a lamp that's turned off. You see people uh, doing the commandments. There's no light in it. There's no light. And they don't feel, they just feel they're doing what God wants, which is a wonderful thing, seeing as they're working at their <coughs> their, their full capacity. But really, it's supposed to be that the mitzvahs are filled with the light of the Torah, the reasons why, the understanding, the godliness. To call mitzvah of the mitzvah, that every single commandment, whether it's positive commandments, or the negative commandments, the true topic of doing the commandments is, kasher alpi Torah, when you do it according to the Torah. Therefore, Hinea Torah, the Torah is called Oz, it's called power. Shua Tokif, that it is the strength, Miratsono, the Chachmaso, from the will and the wisdom of Hashem Shiva Torah. The will and the wisdom of God, which is in the Torah, Shalom which is above understanding. Alamailam Yasechel Anushi, which is above human understanding. <clears throat> that is the essence of the Torah. The essence of the Torah is that it is totally above understanding. That requires what we call faith, simple faith. Learning the Torah like a little child. On the other hand, you have to use your intelligence. You have to be mature. You have to put them both together. But they have to have this simple faith has to be enclosed and even doing the commandments and doing... And that's why in, in the Reform Judaism and this in Germany, so that's what they tried to do away with was this godliness of the Torah. I say Judaism is a good thing. Everybody has to have their rituals. Everybody has to have their their uh, heritage. It is a very very powerful thing to having a heritage. The English have it, and the French have it, and the Greeks have it, and the Romans have it. A, you have to have your heritage and your background and your this. <clears throat> and so we want to have it also. But as far as the Torah goes, the Torah is the book of our heritage, La Havdil. It's like the, the, the Greeks and the Romans, they had the Iliad written and the Odyssey and the Iliad. They, they hired people to write books. They say that the, 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 the Nazis, they hired professors to figure out the background of the German people, how they came from these gods. and the, Very mystical. I don't know if you ever saw it. There were these, they used to have these parades in the 30s in Germany. And there were all these mystical signs that they had. And it was all... All right, the bizarre stuff, really, uh, you know, <coughs> Teutonic gods or whatever they call it. I don't know. Like Greek, mythology. Greek mythology. You have to have your mythology. You know, you have to have your background, where you come from. And this, so some people say the same thing. Like, God forbid, this is Judaism. We have our background. We have our glorious past. But you can change it. They wanted to write the mythology to fit what they wanted. That's to right. You can, it, it evolves. Judaism evolves. Yeah. Right? I could you say it evolves, but it doesn't devolve. You know, uh, uh, diva. And nevertheless, the main thing of the Torah is not so much the outside, the commandments, the ideas, the words. Those are very important. Of course it's very important. 
It's like our parents loving their children, how it's written in a book. They read in the book, and they say, this is what it means, you love your children, then your children will grow up properly, you give them a kiss, and the kid feels that it's empty. He feels that the whole thing is empty. He gets a kiss from his father, like his, his father kisses his Harley motorcycle more, loves it more than, but he gives a kiss, you don't kiss your motorcycle, you kiss your child. Yeah. Doing it automatically, with no... Meaning. It says, the main thing of the Torah is God's will. It's the creator of the universe, totally above understanding. And God is giving the Torah, it's God's inner wisdom and inner will. But this is faith. It's the thing you have to faith. And Avram had it. Avram was the first person that had it. And every day of his was filled with this faith of God. And that God gave the Torah in order to make the world a better place. Hine. Tam v'sibata davar. Second paragraph. Mipenei ma tava Avram, why Avram wanted to have zikna, signs of old age. Ta'alo ar Avram, why you kama tzadikim. One second, we were saying, we just explained. Abraham was a big tzaddik, he was a holy person, he was connected to the wisdom and the will of God, and therefore he wanted it to show. He wanted people to know that there is such a thing as being connected to God, and they would look at him and they'd say, oh, this is an unusual person. What I wonder, right, I would like to, to be like that. Everyone says, you want to be like this? Devote yourself totally to Hashem. Don't think about yourself. Don't think about how you look. Don't think about how you are. Don't think, think about only what God wants from me, right, <clears throat> to actually do it in the world. That's what you want. Says the Rebbe, one second. But Abraham was not the first tzaddik. <clears throat> they were tzaddikim gadolim before. Chanuch. Halachim elokim. Mesushelach. It says, because of his avlo, because of Meshur when he died, the seven days, Dacha Kodesh Bruhu, God pushed away the flood. Seven days. Kumosh Ketu, Vayasil, Vayihi B'Shiv Asiyamim, in the, about Noach. It was after seven days, Hamabal Hoyal Oretz, the flood was on the earth. But Od Hayukama Tzadikim, there were other Tzadikim, Gedolim, big Tzadikim. Bafrad, and especially Noach himself. Shekatu, that the Torah may eat a lot, it testifies on him. Shu ish tzaddik, that Noach was a tzaddik. Shame ve'ever. It says shame ve'ever. It says that they knew the Torah, whatever the Torah was relevant then. Gdolia Torah. They taught the Torah. It says that the, the, the Yaakov sat in the yeshiva of shame ve'ever. He ne gam echad me'em lo itpalel. Not any one of these big tzaddikim prayed Allah zikna on old age. Rak Avram, only Avram. <clears throat> well, Rishon is the first one. Hamid Palel that prayed Vitovea and demanded zikna, old age, Velovin Sar and white hairs. What's going on? Why? Okay, Herschel. Hine. Kasiv, it is written. Mi heir mi Mizrach. <clears throat> it's a sentence in Yeshaya. Who woke up the one from the east? It's talking about Avram. Who woke Avram up? Who inspired Abraham to go and start conquering the world, make a war against idolatry, make a war against ignorance? Who aroused him? Me here. <clears throat> Omer, as all the rabbis say, don't say who aroused Woke up Abraham. Eleheir. Who made Abraham shine? Heir. Ba'alef, with an Aleph. The Avram hitchil heir. The Avram started to shine. True, there were big tzaddikim before Avram, but they were all for themselves. Avram, the Ad Avram, that up to Avram, Haya Ha'olam, the world was midnight. It conducted itself ba'afela. In darkness, in confusion, darkness. Ubo Avram, and came Avram v'hitchil ha'ir, and he started to shine the world up. Now Avram Avinu all over Shalom, that Avram Avinu of blessed memory, pirsom elokuso yisbarich, he advertised godliness be'olam in the world. The open pirsomo. And how did he do it? Haya was ba'avodah, the Mesirat Nefesh. He was self-sacrificing. He didn't just go and talk, look around, and find who he thought was religious, who he thought might be a good 
good, uh, com- a good receiver for his ideas. <clears throat> he went around and looked for the dejected people and people that didn't have any po- purpose in life, bums and things like that. And he promised them money. He said, just follow me. No. Avram went to people that he knew would not accept what he wanted to say. He went to people that he knew. <laughs> he went to people that he knew didn't want to hear his message. People that were sure of themselves. They were worshiping idols and they were sitting high. They were riding on the waves. They worshiped the sun. They worshiped the moon. And they had big buildings and they had big followers. And they had <clears throat> amazing success. Right? Amazing success. And they were the big ratings, whatever it is, on, on whatever they had. The core, the, 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 what was it? The, the uh, of television back then. I don't know what that counterpart of television back then. Whatever they had. They must have had something. Anyway, he went to the big shots. Avram went and he went to people that were sure of themselves and he said, you're wrong. You're wrong. There is a God. God creates you. God loves you. Do what God says. Don't think about yourself. That'll take care of you. You just do what God wants and the whole thing, everything is going to be okay. Everybody said, what do you mean? I'm going to be like you. Look at you. I'm sitting here tov, drinking my beer, watching my idol. Whatever I'm doing this. American idol. What is idol? Everybody has their own idol. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm doing. I'm, I'm enjoying life. I do what I want to. Right? I, I, anything I want. And I pray to my idol that I say this. And it's going good. Look at you. You're, you're a madman. You haven't got a minute of silence. You haven't got a minute of, of calmness. Right? You're going... One thing I will admit, though, you you have a nice beard, <laughs> a beard, <laughs> a beard. I gotta hand it to you. This is something else. Your beard, right? What, what, what did Abraham? What did Abraham want? What did Abraham want? He wanted to drive the world crazy. He wanted. It. There was some person that said, "Then oh, we'll talk about this later." Okay. The bezeh he ear at the olam, and this Avram made the world shine. Umehai timer for this reason. Hari who davka tava zikna. He was the one who demanded that he should have old age. Hainu liot bal mesirut nefesh because he was self-sacrificing. Let's do the next couple of words and we'll, I'll copy tomorrow. Lakade shem shemayim because Abraham he was self-sacrificing to make God's name holy. And if you remember, we talked about this in the previous mimer that we had. <clears throat> about the tzaddikim are called by the name of God. Remember, we learned that, my room. Namely, what? That the name, he made the name of God revealed in the whole world. That people started realizing God is creating us. Therefore, Avram, he knew the tremendous importance of having this beard, the sar levan, and white hairs. And those people would look at this and they would say, this is an unusual person. Something is going on over here. Maybe he's onto something true. Maybe he, this man, has, maybe I should listen to what he's got to say. Maybe he's really trying to tell me something. Like all the other gods, all these people worship for what they get. This guy has a big boat. He has a big house. He has a big, what is a tower. This guy has a nice lawn. This person has whatever is the, the, the nice wives. He's got cows. This maybe I should worship God, not thinking about myself. Maybe I should think about only what is really the truth, right? Maybe some people. There's people in India, you know, these religions. There's people. They say everybody thinks about. We're going to think about getting pain. We're going to suffer. We're going to suffer. They 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 sit on beds of nails. They don't eat. They walk on their hands. I saw. They walk on their hands all their whole life. Right? They want to suffer all the time. They're going to be different. They're going to be different. But still, they're doing it for themselves. They're doing it for themselves because this is how I'm going to get the world to come. I'm going to get a higher level of pleasure. I'm going to get a more eternal pleasure, a pleasure that doesn't depend on anything. I'm re- in- infinite reward. I'll suffer here. I'll get over there. Avram said, forget about the suffering and forget about all this stuff. You just do what God wants. And think about, I want to do what God wants. <clears throat> God forbid, God wants me to suffer. Okay. I mean, there, there is suffering in the world. At least a person knows, listen, this is happening because that's what God wants. You know how easy it was in communist Russia for Jews just to leave Judaism and just become a communist. 
then all of a sudden life just opened up for them. Opportunities, work, friends. As soon as they were religious Jews, it was terrible. They couldn't have, they, they were pursued, they were murdered, they were killed, they had to hide all the time. They had to figure out ways not to send their children to school. Every second was, was torture. But in the end, they did the truth. And the people were the communists, most of them, they got killed by other communists. Right? And, and what did they get out of it? After they finished the whole thing, what did they get? The whole thing is dead. The whole thing, communism was a big, a big lie, except for the American leftists and the, and the Israeli leftists, of course. <laughs> communism will never... <laughs> Communism is here will never. They say a joke that a lady, in after the fall of communism in Russia, there's a lady pushing to get on an LL flight. And there's a lady, what are you pushing for? An old lady, what are you pushing for? She said, I got to get out, I got to get out of here, I got to get out of here. They said, but, but communism is dead. He said, I know it's dead. I want to go to Israel. There it's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Abraham. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that's what Abraham wanted. Abraham wanted that people should stop thinking about themselves and think about something infinitely more real. The Creator. The Creator wants to activate you. The Creator wants you to be a person that's happy without the... Why do people have fears? Why do people get depressed? Because they think about themselves. right? Why do people have anxiety? They think about themselves. A person gets selfish. He has all these things that Freud and Adler and these people talked about. Right, all these these uh, the, the psychoses and neuroses and hangups and inferiority complexes and defenses, all these things come from pure selfishness. That's all they come from. And as soon as a person thinks about something bigger than himself, then it's a possibility he can get out of this stuff. I can get out of it. And that's what Abraham wanted. Abraham wanted people to think about the truth about God, and that God is creating them. He's creating everyone. Therefore, he wanted to have this beard to advertise to everyone that he's on to something, that he's on to a thing called Masirut Nefesh, self-sacrifice. And that's what the beard represents, as we'll talk more, God willing, tomorrow.